Okay, let's do a little bit of math now. Um, sorry, trigger warning for those of you who are averse. Um, we're going to do some calculations in order to determine some values for the circuit. So remember, what we're doing here is we've got a capacitor under test that is generating a pulse train that we are going to use um, as a... Uh, that we're trying to measure. <coughs> so the capacitor under test is going to create a pulse train that we're trying to measure and the way we're going to measure it is by having a second pulse train that we're going to count the uh, count up as they appear inside of this pulse train. So when the triple five timer creates a, um, a high that's when we're going to be doing our counting. Now remember a couple of other things. We've got some voltages that we're interested in. VCC, that's going to be 5 volts in our case. 2 thirds of VCC, 1 third of VCC, and that's going to determine timings. When we charge up a capacitor, it kind of looks like this. So we are interested in the time between here and here. So we're going to call this our high time. Now, the equation for discharge for charging a capacitor is the voltage across the capacitor is equal to the supply voltage times 1 minus e to the negative t over rc. So we can figure out t if we know everything else. And so we let's pretend we know the r and the c, the time constant, because that's going to be a, a given. Actually, let me step back a minute. What do we want? What are we trying to design around? We're trying to design around a measurement period for our largest capacitor. Okay. Um, so if we say that our measurement time has to be less than one second. That's the longest that we're going to tolerate taking samples for. And the measurement time has to be less than one second when we're measuring our largest capacitor, say 9.9 .9 microfarads. That's the largest capacitor we're going to be able to measure, or let's just make that a constraint. So our, we're going to be measuring, uh, we're going to be measuring and it has to be less than a second, and we're going to be measuring a 9.9 .9 microfarad capacitor. So what that means is every second at the largest range, we're going to be um, taking a new measurement. The other constraint that we're going to have is, so that constraints R and T. Now, the other constraint is going to re revolve around R, and we'll, f we'll talk about that a bit more later, but it's essentially determined by maximum values from the data sheet um, in order to have enough uh, not overburden your triple five and have enough current. Uh, yeah, not overburden your triple five with a lot of current coming on to the trigger and to the reset er, and to the uh, threshold and re and uh, trigger. In this case, we need to figure out two. Th if we want to find out the time high, we can figure out the time it takes to charge up to here, and then the time it takes to charge it up to here, and then subtract this time off. So we're going to call this T zero. And we're going to call this T1, and TH is equal to T1 minus T0. So, time it takes to charge to T0 is, well, it's going to be one-third of VCC is equal to VCC times 1 minus E to the negative T zero over RC. Simple enough. So VCCs cancel. Um, that's the same thing as saying um, 3 is equal... no, wait, hang on a second. That's the same thing as... let's, let's do this slowly. 1 third is equal to 1 minus E to negative T0 over RC. And so that's the same thing as saying two-thirds is equal to, uh, OK, 
Okay, if we add that to both sides and we subtract that from both sides, that moves things around. So that's 2 thirds is equal to e to the negative t0 over rc. Why did I put rr? Now, <clears throat> if we multiply both sides, well, this is in the denominator because an exponent is negative, so that's the same thing as saying 3 halves is equal to um, e to the t0 over rc. So I just inverted both sides. Um, and that's the same thing as saying the natural log of 3 halves is equal to t0 rc. Uh, those parentheses are redundant. Or t0 is equal to the natural log of 3 halves R C. Simple enough. And similarly, since we're using T0, um, two thirds of VCC is going to equal to VCC times 1 minus E to the, but this time negative T1 over R C. And how's that work? Um, T1 is the time to charge up to two-thirds of VCC. So that's the same thing as saying two-thirds is equal to one minus E to the negative T1 over RC. Or if I add this to both sides and subtract that from both sides, one-third is equal to E to the negative T1 over RC. And that's the same thing as saying 3 is equal to e to the t1 over rc, or the natural log of 3 is equal to t1 over rc, or t1 is equal to the natural log of 3 times r. C. Okay, so now T1 minus T0, that's time it spends high, is equal to natural log of 3 RC minus T0, which is a natural log of 3 halves. R C that can be written differently. Um, the natural log of a fraction is the numerator, the natural log of the numerator minus the natural log of the denominator. So natural log of three R C is equal uh, minus natural log of three minus natural log of 2 rc, which is the same thing as saying the natural log. So that's natural log of 3, uh, factor out rc. So natural log of 3 minus the natural log of 3 minus negative 2. Uh, natural log of 2 is natural log of 2 rc. But remember, r is actually R1 plus R2. So the time it spends high is equal to the natural log of 2 times R1 plus R2 times our capacitor under test. So that's equal to the natural log of 2 times R1 plus R2 times 9.9 .9 times 10 to the negative 6 farads. So, say we want our, and we wanted this to be less than a second. So what's this all equal to? Natural log of 2 is 0 0.693. I should all, I should remember that. I should remember that times 9.9 .9 
um, divided by 10 to the sixth. Okay, so time pi, which is going to be equal to r1 plus r2 divided by 6.86 6 times 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Yeah, of course, 10 to the negative 6. Okay, if, this, if we want this to be 1, that means r1 time plus r2 needs to be 1 over that. So the time, if the time, if this is going to be 1 second, roughly, that means this, that r1 plus r2 has to be around 146 kilo ohms, roughly. Now, <clears throat> we should choose R1 and R2 in such a way that it's easy to get this and it's easy to get values for this, or easy to get these values. And the ones that they chose in the bold port kit are, uh, what was it, 130K plus a 13K. That's 143K. So what does that actually mean in terms of um, uh, frequency? Um, I think that it comes out at just slightly under a second because we're, we're making this a little larger, so that means this is going to be a little smaller. This has to be, yeah, that means this is going to be a little smaller. So, yeah, that's what they chose on the kit, and that is how they came up with those values. Our R2 is equal to, say, like 10% of R1, 0.1 R1, then the duty cycle is going to be something like R1 plus 0.1 R1 over R1 plus 0.2 R1. So that's going to be 1.1 R1 over 1.2 R2. So the duty cycle is going to be approximately 90, what is that, 6%? No, 91%, which is a reasonable duty cycle. So it's down 10% of the time. Okay, so what is our actual period going to be if we use 130 and 13K resistors? So we go back to our equation here. Natural log of 2 times RC. So, so the time it spins high is going to be equal to 0 0.693 times 143. 143 times 10 to the 3 times 9.9 .9 times 10 to the negative 6. And that works out to 0 0.981 seconds. Okay, <clears throat> now, in that 0 0.981 seconds, we want to get 99 counts. So, we want a frequency of 99 divided by 0 0.981. And what is that equal to? 100.909. So the frequency is going to be 100.9 hertz. At 99 microfarads, we have to generate a frequency of 100.9 hertz. To restate this in another way, for a 9.9 .9 microfarad uh, capacitor to have a maximum resolution, given our 99 counts, we need a frequency of 100.9 hertz. Now, if we make this capacitor smaller by a factor of 10, so it's now 9.9 .9 times 10 to the negative 7, 
that means this is going to be 0 0.0981, which means this is going to be equal to 1.009 kilohertz. Uh, so that's not 9.9 .9 microfarads anymore. That's 0 0.99 microfarads. That implies a frequency of 1.009 kilohertz. And similarly, if we go to 99 nanofarads, our frequency has to be equal to 10.09 kilohertz. And if we go to 9.9 .9 nanofarads, our frequency has to go to 100.9 kilohertz. And this is how we design our um, other triple five timer to support these various frequencies. So what we need to do is we need to figure out, um, remember we've got a second, second oscillator now, and we need to find values for R1, R2, and C, where R2 is actually corresponding to four different values. So let's make R2 proportional to R1. So we're going to have four values. A, R1, B times R1, C times R1, and D times R1, which are our four different ranges. So. Um, we will choose R1 in such a way that we can choose all of these as multiples, and then C, um, you could choose that to be some, you, you choose that to be a capacitor that is small, because we need to have this thing going pretty fast. 100 kilohertz is pretty fast for a triple five timer. Um, I mean, it's not at the top of its range, but it's reasonably fast for a triple five timer. So we'll probably need some small capacitor. Um, they chose 4.7, but let's do our math using um, a 4.7 nanofarad. Let's use um, one nanofarad as our uh, value just to make the numbers a bit easier. So let's and see if we get reasonable values for our resistance. So let's see if choosing C as one nanofarad, um, R1 um, will be a parameter if we can choose a value of R1 that makes sense so that all four of these make sense and we can generate this volt, these um, frequencies, then we'll be good. Now, before we can get there though, we need to um, figure out what the decay time, remember we've, we've got our, um, our time where our capacitor is charging. So we figured that already, that's T1. And now we want to find a T2 where our capacitor is discharging. Now, the formula for that is the voltage across the capacitor at, any t at, at a time after um, it is at the voltage, source voltage is E to the negative T over R C. So after a time T, the capacitor will be at a voltage V if it started at a voltage Vs. So we're looking for the time for it to reduce to one third Vcc and then from a value of two thirds. Whoops. Vcc times E to the negative T over RC. So that means um, one third is equal to two thirds E to the negative T over RC. Or if we multiply both sides by three, divide by two, that's the same thing as saying two is equal to E to the negative T over RC. So that's the same thing as saying the natural log of 2 
is equal to negative t over r c or t is equal to negative natural log of 2 r c. So that should be one half. Right, because multiplying and dividing, so one half is e to, so negative natural log of one half. But that's the same thing as saying because the natural log of one is zero, because anything to the zeroth power is one. And so that means we're subtracting a negative natural log of two. That's the same thing as saying the natural log of two. R C is equal to T. And that's T2. T2 is the time it takes to decay from two thirds of VCC down to one third. All right. So that means that the, to the total time that is taken in one cycle. Let me move this down here. The total time, or t total, which is equal to t1 plus t2, that's equal to, well, <clears throat> the time when it's high, which was the natural log of 2 times r1 plus r2, because remember, the capacitor is discharging, or charging up through both r1 and r2 times c, and then we have to add natural log of 2 r 2 c, which we got right here. And that's the same thing as saying, uh, factor the natural log of 2 out of there, so the natural log of 2 times r1 plus 2 r2, factoring c from both terms, leaves us with the t total, the total time. And then the inverse of that is going to be the frequency. 1 over natural log of 2 times r1 plus 2r2c. So those are the two equations that we're going to be using. Um, and then, then we're going to be substituting in here for um, r1. R2 is going to be substituted by a multiple of R1, and then we're going to look for values that satisfy reasonableness conditions for our um, for our triple five timer in terms of values that we need. So we'll start at one um, one nanofarad and see if that makes sense and if it generates reasonable values or or whatnot because that's a common um, capacitor value. And they use different value on the kit, but um, let's just see this, see what the numbers look like with this as a starting point. Okay, so I made a little table that outlines the four different ranges that we're going to be considering, the frequency that those ranges are need to be operating at, so 100.9 hertz all the way up to 100.9 kilohertz. Then um, the frequent or the period, which is the inverse of the frequency, so. The inverse of that is 9.91 milliseconds. Inverse of that is 991 microseconds, 99.1 and 9.91 microseconds, because we're going up by a factor of 10 each time. <clears throat> and then um, representing that in terms of R1 plus 2R, well, N, where N is 2, 3, 4, or 5 for the different um, range resistors that we're going to be selecting. And then a single capacitance C. Now. What we should do here is try and figure out what the order of magnitude is for C so that we can get some reasonable, let's see if we can get reasonable values for the resistances because we've got a couple of um, things that we want to do. We want to make sure that when the discharge pin goes low that we're not short circuiting our triple five to um, ground because when the discharge pin, sorry, when the discharge pin is connected to ground, that means VCC is going to ground. So R1 has to um, protect our um, 
triple five timer from receiving too much current. That's one thing. And then the other thing we have to make sure of is that this isn't too high so that there is enough current flowing for these two pins to recognize the correct voltage. So those are two constraints that we have. Okay, so we've got our table of um, our ranges, our frequencies, our and our period. So now let's do um, a little bit of calculation to see whether we can find suitable values for C and R. So one formula we're going to be looking at a lot is 9.91 times 10 to the negative 3 seconds over um, 0 0.693 times C. Now, uh, and that's going to be equal to R1 plus 2R2. So what range do we have to choose C in? I don't know. Let's see what else we're going to be doing here. So if this is 991 times 10 to the negative 6, this is 9.91 times 10 to the negative 6. C is going to be times 10. If it's nanofarads, that's going to be negative 9. So this whole thing is going to be 10 to the 6th. So that's mega ohms. Okay, so if this is nanofarads, we get this in mega ohms. That's not bad. And then if this is nanofarads, and this formula here is going to be 9.91 times 10 to the negative 6 over 0 0.693 times C times 10 to the something. If this is negative 9, then this whole thing is going to be negative 3, so that's kilo ohms. So that's equal to R1 plus 2R5. So that's going to be in the range of kilo ohms, and this is going to be in the range of mega ohms. That should work. So if we make this minus 9, minus 9. So C is some nanofarad capacitor. Fair enough. Those are cheap and easy to acquire. Um, and what value should it have? Well, uh, 9.91 divided by 0.693 is 14.3. So this is 14.3 times 10 to the uh, sixth over C, where C is just the pure number because I already dealt with units. And same thing here, 14.3 over C times 10 to the 3. So what value should C have? I need to have R1 plus 2R5 equal to 14.3. And I need 14.3 kilo ohms. R1 has to be a certain size. Um, it has to be big enough to prevent that short circuit we were talking about earlier. So let's maybe, you know, dealing with 5 volts, so 55 milliamps is fine if this is 1K. So if that's 1K, um, if C is 10, that's 1.43, so 1 plus 200. 1K plus um, 2 times 200 ohms. That could work. And then for the higher ranges where we're talking, uh, if this is 1K, that's just rounding error. And we're just looking at 2 times R2. So that would mean this would be 700 um, K, roughly. Now, those aren't particularly common. Uh, so let's try a different value for C. What if C were 4.7? And then we're having these things. 
So that means roughly, so 14.3 divided by 4.7 is, so yeah, 3.04. That's a nicer number. So 3.04 mega ohms, or down to 3.04 kilo ohms is equal to R1 plus 2R2. And now we're talking about 1.5 meg up here, and here we're talking 1 plus uh, 2R5, so R5 is 1K. Okay, so that would mean a 75% duty cycle, and this would mean somewhere close to 50% duty cycle, because um, most of the time it is spent, well, it's all swamped by this, so this term dominates, um, so you're charging and discharging at roughly the same rate, so it's roughly 50%. So yeah, I think that's where he came up with his value um, uh, that he used, which was 4.7 nanofarads was the capacitor, and then we have 1.5 megs here, so it's probably 150K for the next step down, um, 15K for the next step down, roughly, and then one, okay, on the schematic, this is, yeah, 14k. So yeah, we're going to have to probably probably have to prototype the circuit in order to get the exact values relative to the um, relative to the triple five that you're actually using, um, and that's probably why also this trimming stuff is available to us so that we can adjust these values depending on how the the circuit is constructed. But um, in any event, that gets us into a, a theoretical ballpark. Um, and if we pick a 4.7 nanofarad capacitor, whatever that capacitor actually is, we're going to have to tune it up and down anyways because these things have some, uh, some generally pretty low tolerance, but you can get higher tolerance capacitors. But um, yeah, no, I mean, if we ch he says to choose this as a 1% or a 5%, 1% or 5%. And that's just to make the, sure that you don't have to be running around like crazy tr mad trying to trim your, your outputs. So, yeah. There we have it. Um, a very nice, uh, very nice project. Uh, excellent bit of uh, learning. Uh, trying to figure out how it works, and thank you very much, Jez, for having a uh, an excellent um, tutorial on the theory of operation. I uh, I found that very useful, very instructive, and I just wanted to add a little bit about those uh, the calculations that went into where all the values come from, and I hope that that was interesting for all of you folk. So yeah, once again, uh, thank you very much for watching. And talk to you later. Bye for now.